What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 joint simulation tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to simulate the movement of a worm gear inside of Autodesk Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. In last week's video, we talked about how to create bevel gears in order to change movement 90 degrees. This week, we're gonna simulate the movement of a worm gear. And so to start off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna import these gears from the McMaster car object library. So we're gonna go into the insert option. We're gonna click on the button for insert McMaster car component. We're gonna search for gear. So in this video, we're gonna focus specifically on simulating the movement of the gear rather than modeling the gear. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the metal gears for changing direction, and we're gonna click on the button for worm. And we're gonna to need to download the worm and the worm gear. So the way that we're gonna do that is first we're gonna go into worms and we're gonna select the first one which is gonna have the pitch of 12. We're gonna click on that, click on the product detail, and then scroll down and download the 3D step version of this and click save. That's gonna download this into our model. And so then we're gonna come in and do the same thing but with the actual gear itself. So again, we're just gonna search gear Metal gears for changing direction, worm. And if you look at this, there's a couple of these that have the 12 pitch in here. In this situation, I wanna select the one with the 12 pitch, so the one that has the same pitch as the worm. And we're gonna select the one that has a 20 to one speed ratio. So click on the one for 20 to one speed ratio, click on product detail, and we're gonna download the 3D step version of that as well. And so what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're going to want to align these two components. And it's actually a lot easier to do this with these components than with the bevel gear that we talked about last week. So we're just gonna take this and we're gonna rotate this by negative 90 degrees. We're gonna move it up. And don't be afraid to use the, uh, the default views here in order to do this. So we're gonna move this up. And we're gonna move it over. So our gear is aligned with this gap. And so we wanna make sure this gear is in here without actually going through any of the walls. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on OK. And I'm gonna click on the button for capture position as well so these aren't jumping around on us. And so now what we need to do is you can see how we have our worm gear in here or we have our worm in here and then we have our worm gear. And what we need to do is we need to create joints that these can spin around. And so because of the nature of these, what these need is these need a central axis in order to spin around. So these joints don't necessarily need to be associated with each other. They need to be associated with a point that runs through the center of this object. Because really when these spin, these would spin based on whatever's in the middle of them. So in order to do that, we're gonna create a couple empty components. So we're just gonna right click in here and we're gonna click on new component under worm gear 21. I've saved this under worm gear 20 to one ratio. And so for this first one, we're gonna create this empty component and then we're gonna click on this button right here to activate that. And what we wanna do for this component is we wanna create a construction axis through the center of this cylinder. So we're just gonna click on the button for axis through cylinder cone torus. We're gonna to mouse over this and we're gonna click. We're gonna click on okay. And so what that's done is that's dropped this, uh, basically this guideline inside of this component. Well now, if we go back and we activate the overall model component, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an as-built joint between the worm and this line right here. So we're just gonna click on the button for assemble. We're gonna click on as-built joint. And we want to select our component right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start this over. So I'm gonna click little X and I'm gonna click on select. We're gonna select our component and then we're gonna click on this component right here, or you can click on it in your model. And we wanna change this to a revolute joint because this is going to spin. And then it's gonna ask us for the position. So basically it's asking us what we want this to spin around, which in this situation is gonna be this central axis. So now if you look at this, when we animate this, this is going to spin inside of our model. And so we wanna do the exact same thing for this object right here. So we wanna create another component so right click, new component. We want to construct an axis through the center of this cylinder and click OK. And then we wanna create an as-built joint between this gear 
this line, and our position is going to be based on this line. So now this is going to spin as well. And we're going to go ahead and click on OK. And so another thing that's really important about this is because we have these lines in here, we can um, ground them in order to keep our objects from moving. Because you can see if I click and drag this right now, it doesn't spin, it moves around. So what we want to do is we want to find this component over here, right click on it, and we want to ground it. Once we ground it, now if we click and drag on this, you can see how it's going to spin. So this is now grounded and it allows it to spin around this central point. Then we want to do the same thing for this object. So we want this object to also be grounded. Otherwise, this is going to jump around too. So we're going to right click on this uh, component that contains that guideline. We're going to click on ground. Now, if I click and drag this, it's going to spin as well. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this just a little bit right here and I'm going to capture this position. So that means that our position is now going to be lined up between these two gears. And so what we want to do now is because we have these two gears set up where they'll spin, we want to create a motion link between the two of them because we want this to spin when this spins. So we're going to go into a symbol, we're going to click on motion link and we want to create a motion link between this joint and this joint. And so the way that this works is because this has a ratio of 20 to 1, our first joint is going to spin 20 times in the time it takes the second joint to spin once. So we want this second joint right here to be 360 degrees. We want this first joint to be 360 degrees divided by 20. So we want this to spin 360 degrees and then this is going to spin 20 times slower. So this just needs to be 360 divided by 20. And so now, if you look at this front on, you can see how when this spins, now these gears are spinning at the same rate. So we've got this set up the way that we want this to be. And depending on what direction this is turning, you can reverse the direction. In this situation, this was spinning correctly, so we're going to go ahead and click on OK. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add a handle to this really quick, and I'm going to speed this part of the video up, and then we'll create a rigid joint between these so that when you spin the handle, this object will spin. So I'm going to speed this up and then we'll come back and talk about it in a second. All right, so now we have our handle in here. So it's just a very simple handle. And notice that I modeled it in here as a component. Well, all we need to do now is because these will spin and the gears kind of work together, all we need to do is we need to create a rigid joint between our handle and this object right here. Then when we spin this, this will also spin. So all we need to do is just do an assemble joint and we just want to select component one and we'll select this point right here and then let's do a little measurement real quick. So this is a measurement between this point and this point. So you can see how the distance is one inch. So we're going to need that because when we create this joint, right now, if we mouse over this and click on this point, and then we click on this one, it's going to move this over. So we just need to move this back by negative one inch to put it back in place. And we want this joint to be a rigid joint, meaning these are kind of locked together. We're going to go ahead and click on OK. So now if we look at the front side, these are still aligned. And all we need to do is if we spin this handle, you can see how this worm gear is going to spin along with it. So now we have a joint that's actually simulating that movement. And if we wanted to, we could, inside of our joints, we could go ahead and we could click on Animate Model. So we could right click on this and click Animate Model. And this will actually run and we can actually fly around it and look at it as we go. So you can see how if we animate this model, this gear is spinning at the proper ratio based on the worm gear that we have in here. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about this series, if you're finding it helpful. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.